Good morning, my dear. Today is Sunday, November 22nd. I am Reverend Gretchen Pena, and today's word is forgive. Forgiveness is a gnarly topic. It's something that I think probably every religion in the world says we need to, to do. We need to experience this. But it is a challenge. So often we are told, <clears throat> excuse me, if you just for, if you would only forgive, just just pray about it, forgive, and everything will be fine. We recognize most of us that in order to to be as spiritually, emotionally, and physically healthy as is possible, we need to forgive. <clears throat> because carrying around unforgiveness is like having this huge gunny sack of rocks that we're just toting with us everywhere we go. It's exhausting and it interferes with everything we do. But how do we do it? Our scripture this morning is from uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter 23, verse 34, and it's where Jesus is on the cross, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And <clears throat> I know that from time to time, we, we, if we're reading a Bible commentary, we learn that sometimes the words in the Bible are not accurate or um their newer translations give a better uh, interpretation of what whoever the author was meant. And I've never read it about this particular verse, but I deeply suspect that there's a word missing. And I think that word is I. Father, I forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Because when we think about it, God does not be, need to be reminded of his job of forgiving. It's automatic. But it was perhaps a struggle for Jesus for a while. So he finally came to the point on the cross after having been tortured where he could say, Father, I forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And this can be helpful to us to realize that the people that have wounded us on a spiritual level, at least, do not know what they are doing. Who among us has not experienced <clears throat> ridicule or rejection or humiliation or betrayal or deception or disappointment or abuse? We have experienced these things perhaps when we were little children, perhaps yesterday, and it is a challenge to forgive. There are, generally, we, we hear, like I said earlier, just, well, just pray about it, um, but sometimes these wounds are so deep, they are so rooted in our consciousness that we have great difficulty just dismissing them. I'm not saying it's, it's impossible. I'm sure there have been instances where someone uh, sincerely prayed to be relieved of the burden of whatever unforgiveness they were carrying, and it happened in a heartbeat. I have never met that person. My experience has been that forgiveness is not a one-time decision that we finally say, okay, I've carried this around long enough. I realize if I want to get on with my life, I need to forgive. Therefore, I do. It's not that easy. Forgiveness is not a one-time decision. It's a process. And I use this wonderful book in my forgiveness workshop. It's by a man called Sidney Simon. 
and it's called forgiveness, how to make peace with your past and get on with your life. And he says that there are six stages of forgiveness. And the first is denial. We don't even admit that we need to forgive or that anything bad happened. And then the second is self-blame. We know about that. The third is victim, and it's very easy to get stuck in this stage because people feel sorry for us and say, oh, you poor thing. And um, we, we get some emotional <clears throat> uh, strokes from that. The fourth stage is anger, um, and some people get stuck there, and I'm sure we've all met them. The fifth stage he calls survivor, and that's kind of a turning point when we realize that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that forgiveness is possible, and we start doing things to improve our lives. Maybe we start dieting and exercising, or uh, we develop a spiritual practice that we had not done before. Um, so we're, we're doing a, a U-turn away from negativity. And finally, in the sixth stage, we get to forgiveness, where we can actually, honestly, truly, deeply forgive someone or some institution. So if you are struggling with someone you need to forgive, I highly recommend this book. I hope someday I can do the workshop again uh, because it has changed lives. It is um, doing the book in um, a setting with other people. Just kind of hold your feet to the fire. If you do it on your own, um, you may do a, read a chapter and then forget about it. But if you come back week after week for six weeks, um, you get it and your life has changed. But that's enough about the book. Our affirmation this morning is, I am open to forgiveness, recognizing that chances are it's not gonna happen in a heartbeat. But this is a baby step. I am open to forgiveness. And see where that leads us. So let's take a moment now to go more deeply within. So I invite you to settle yourself comfortably in your seat, if possible. Place both your feet on the floor so your body can be centered and aligned and your energy can move freely. Set aside anything you're holding in your lap, in your consciousness. And allow yourself to just be still. I invite you to take a deep, holy breath and as you exhale, allow this to symbolize your willingness to enter into this meditative process where this, wherever this is, is a safe place. This is a sacred place because God is here. And now, as we join together in prayer, silently allow the words that you hear me speak become the words of your heart. Precious Spirit, there are things, there are people, there are institutions that I need to forgive for my own sake, not for theirs. Because what I do in this case is purely selfish. I am doing this to heal my own spirit. I am taking baby steps. I am being open to forgiveness recognizing that as long as I stay in a state of resentment, I am only hurting myself. If I were to approach someone from my past and say to them, finally, I forgive you, chances are they may, I'd ha might not have any idea what I'm talking about. So to spare myself additional grief, <clears throat> I recognize that 
Forgiveness is an inside job. It really has nothing to do with the offender. It's all about me. So I breathe deeply, recognizing that yes, I've been hurt. Yes, I've carried it around far too long. And yes, I am open to forgiveness. And so in these moments and moments to come in the following days and weeks, precious spirit, I ask you to gently nudge me in the right direction. Give me insights to help me do the next step and the one after that so that I can be well on the way to absolutely <clears throat> forgiving whoever it is that needs my forgiveness or whoever it is that I need to forgive because I'm doing it for me. So I take a moment now to go more deeply within, resting in the silence, recognizing that as I am still, I am opening myself to your love, your compassion, your healing energy, and I am ready and willing in the silence. And precious spirit, I thank you for these moments of peace, these moments of quiet, these moments of connection. And I realize that your blessings surround me. They are infinite. I am enfolded in your love and I am able 
to take the first baby step towards forgiveness. Thank you. Thank you, God. In the name and through the power of the living Christ presence. Amen. And thank you, my dear, for joining me. Again, if you are interested in the book, the author is Sidney Simon, and the title is Forgiveness. You have a blessed day. Namaste.